What is happening everyone? We are back and today is the day that we spray and paint our master closet system. Now this is a day I've been waiting in great anticipation as well as a decent amount of fear because I've never painted something this large before or done it with a HVLP or high volume, low pressure spray gun. This is something I picked up at Harbor Freight. This is, I think their $15 super cheap HVLP gun. And I've modified the tip uh, on this one from a 1.4 to roughly a two millimeter by drilling out the inner tip uh, with the 564th drill bit. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube about how to do that. I won't necessarily go into it, but that apparently makes this a gun suitable to spray thicker paints with, uh, you know, like furniture paint. So I'm using a bare premium um, satin sheen and that is going to be reduced, I think like one to one with water or one to one half with some water just to thin it out so it'll go through the gun better. And this is my pressure regulator and my air cleaner. Uh, I think it's a moisture and dirt trap. And this is what I use for my other spray gun. And I've made both guns uh, with these air hose tips so I can just plug this one in and out just like that. Uh, I also have a canister on the top. This is gravity fed. And so that's gonna put about a quart of paint per run essentially in. And I'm doing what you should not be doing, which is using a, uh, what is that? A six gallon air compressor. Now you're supposed to have a bunch of air. It's not supposed to work technically like this, but plenty of people have said that kind of if you just go slower, uh, you should be fine. And I don't spray things all the time, so I'm not gonna get into the pros and cons of air compressor capacity and all that. All we need to know is that we are spraying paint today um, and it's gonna be fun. Well, we just finished our first layer of paint and uh, results are okay, I guess. Um, I've never sprayed furniture before. It's a lot more overspray than I thought there could be. Uh, go figure. I'm pretty sure that's what everyone's gonna tell me when they watch this video. Um, but I think I need more protection for the rest of this workshop if I'm gonna spray in here again. Uh, maybe I'll spray outside with a little tent cover next time. So this was the primer layer, which means uh, there's gonna be a 
step where I sand down all of the raised surfaces now that that primer has kind of brought up the wood grain. Uh, you can tell the difference in wood quality. Uh, let me unplug you here. As you can see, uh, there are certain sections of overrun that's going to have to be sanded down. This is almost kind of ready to touch though. The good thing about HVLP, let me turn this thing off. So you can see some of the overrun in certain, in certain places and you can see the grain kind of lifting up. But when you kind of look at the cabinets overall, they're not bad. Um, it just needs a couple layers more paint to kind of even out some of the wood grain surfaces, especially like this piece of wood here. This is the cheaper birch. Uh, and then something like this over here, this is the higher quality uh, red oak. Um, now, there's a difference of about $30 in that plywood. So the red oak is 90 and the birch is like 60, sometimes 70. So it's not always like, oh yeah, just buy the, cheap, buy the more expensive one because it's, it's, it's really expensive. <laughs> anyway, this piece of wood, I really shouldn't have used this, um, but I don't know, live and learn. I'll put a bunch of wood putty on those kind of gill looking things to cover them up. And then hopefully when I respray, it won't be that bad. The edge banding looks pretty good, kind of squares everything off. Although you can start to see uh, any place where the edge banding really didn't get the best contact. Um, I'm going to have to reheat this up and press this in. There were a couple of areas where I saw that too, but now you can kind of see where I have to add in some putty um, to kind of complete the corner. So I'll probably do that after sanding or before sanding. Uh, I'm going to put this back on the stand and get to sanding. We'll start sanding this one first. We'll apply some putty and then hopefully by that time these two will have dried. I'll get some putty on here, fix the edge banding, do more sanding. Uh, and then I think that'll be it for the night. I got another coat on to this middle cabinet here and um, well, I guess it looks good. This top, I mean, it's already kind of dry. That's the good thing about HVLP, it dries really fast. This top layer here is pretty good. The side walls, I think we'll need, well, it'll probably need two more layers of paint for I think this to be considered all done. There's not much I can do about some of the end grain or the grain pattern on these sidewalls. I think that's just the reality of working with birch plywood. Um, I mean, whatever. Uh, but I will say that the look of it is improving. I actually kind of prefer the natural wood look and I kind of regret um, buying mixed plywood. Had I kept everything the same type of plywood, I may have gotten away with doing some type of stain but um, here we are painting them white, trying to make it uniform. But overall, I'm okay with it. Go figure, as soon as I bring the project outside, it is starting to rain. So now I have to move everything back inside and probably wait for another day to try and paint. Hopefully tomorrow. Who knows?
Well, as you can see, because it's raining, we've brought all the cabinets back inside. And this time I am still gonna paint inside, but I have all the cabinets facing down. That way all of my spray is kind of directed towards the ground. I'm gonna get a couple pieces of plywood sheet to kind of build a little fence around the area that I'm working so the overspray doesn't really hit the concrete too much. And we'll just keep on moving because uh, work's gotta get done, uh, whether you have the right space or not. All right, let's do it. 